Hi, fifth graders. Um, okay, today's art lesson is going to be on one point perspective. Now, this is going to be a little bit of a review for you. Since last year in fourth grade, you have to remember we did that really cool um, street with one point perspective where we did the trees on one side and the buildings on the other. So this is kind of a little bit of a review. But the best part about one point perspective is there's an endless amount of awesome things that you can draw once you learn how to do it. So I've employed my son, Eden, to be my helper today. So welcome, Eden. Um, the first thing that you need for this project is a pencil. Simple, easy, and a white piece of paper. Um, I'm just using a piece of Xerox paper, printer paper. It, any size paper you have for this project, it doesn't matter at all. Okay, you also need a ruler or a straight edge of some sort. We have three different rulers here. He has a little wooden ruler. Here's a nice giant ruler. And actually here's just a piece of a, a part of a game because it's a straight edge. Whatever you have available is fine. Okay, first thing we're going to do is find the center of your paper. And you just need to kind of eyeball it, figure out where the center is and put a dot in the center of the paper. You can go ahead and put a dot in the center of the paper. And what we've created is a vanishing point. This is a very big key, one point perspective, and there's our one point. All right, next thing we're going to do is we are going to make four diagonal lines radiating out from our center point. So we go from the center straight to the edge. And like I said before, whatever size paper you have is fine because this works for any size paper. One, two, three, And four, okay, perfect. All right, good job, Eden. Okay, now as Eden goes, I'm gonna kind of move on to step three, and Eden's gonna catch up. Okay, perfect. Okay, step three is we are going to um, create horizontal, I'm sorry, vertical lines. I'm thinking of the next step. We're gonna create vertical lines going down and they are going to come, here's the key to doing this correctly. And actually I'm gonna to move to this other straight edge because it's um, a little bit smaller, is we're going to create vertical lines coming down. And here's what we're creating. We're creating our sea life aquarium picture. So I'm going to start right here and I'm going to go down. Now the key to this is, Go straight down. Okay, so Eden, if you see, and I'm trying to evenly space them. There is no right or wrong way to however many you do. You just want to keep it straight. And you try to want you want to try to keep them evenly spaced. So if I did one, two, three, four on one side, I want to do one, two, three, four on the other side. Sometimes it's hard to gauge it going this way. You can flip your paper right upside down and do it like this. One, two, three, four. Now, if it makes you more comfortable to measure it, go ahead. I, once again, I just kind of did it by eye. I just kind of figured out how many I want by eye. Okay, now the next part of our video is we are going to create um, our bottom of our walkway. So when you see the description that I've uh, kind of written out for you uh, before you watch the video is when you're at SeaWorld and you're walking through that shark tank area and you're, this is kind of like a little people mover, but ours is going to be a, a checkerboard kind of walkway. And so in order to create a checkerboard walkway, we need to have some, um, horizontal lines. So what we're going to do is we're going to create some horizontal lines. Now these lines do not have to correspond to the actual points over here because this is going to be glass 
and up here is glass, and down here is just a walkway. So it actually, in order to make it an interesting composition, it would be better if your lines did not intersect with your lines here. And if they do, then that's okay too. It looks like my assistant's lines might have intersected and that's completely fine too. All we're doing is creating a checkerboard walkway. So I've created some horizontal lines that go across like this. Good job, Eden. Continue just to do the lines that go across. Looking good. And as he's catching up to me right there, I'm gonna move on to the next step. And what I'm gonna do is, in order to create the checkerboard pattern, we need some diagonal lines to come out from the center of our point and come out. Now, you wanna use a ruler, but here's the idea is you just need some lines to come out. So you could even just draw them very, very, very lightly with your hand. And then you can use your ruler to kind of steady it because I wanna show you a little bit what we're going for. So all you're doing is going for kind of a checkerboard pattern look. Now mine's gonna be kind of a larger checkerboard pattern. If you want yours to be smaller, you can do more lines. The more lines you do, just the more you'll end up having to color in. It's completely up to you. I'm just gonna keep mine kind of large. Perfect, looking good, looking good. You could add one more here and one more here if you want it to be a little more even, but this is looking great. Okay, now, the final step to the drawing part is, now we have a cool checkerboard here, and what you're going for is these are glass windows. Now, in, in order to connect it and make it look like a really interesting composition and kind of really complete the picture, is what we're gonna do is we're gonna do kind of an arched, um, an arched little um, line right here. So it's gonna go like this. It's gonna go up and over. And for each one of your vertical lines, you are going to connect a little rainbow archway. And this you do not have to measure with a ruler because you can't really do that with an arch. But what you're going for is you're going for each one connecting and you're going to run out of room and that's totally fine. You go up, kind of pretend that you're going over like we do in class and then kind of connect it there. And so now what you have is this great one point perspective um, shark tank where you're kind of walking through and um, and you're gonna add color and your fish. So as Eden's finishing up there, nice job Eden, this is looking great. Good job. Okay, um, and so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna kind of veer off to the final product so you can see that. So any, I'm gonna let you know that any uh, medium that you'd like to use, whether you want to, if you have watercolors at home and you'd like to watercolor this area, you'll see it when you see the finished product. But if you'd like to watercolor this area, this is fine. This, you can do any kind of checkerboard pattern. I think black and white works really well because it's a really good contrast from your colorful um, shark tank area. Now, in the final product, I have fish all over here. You can have all different kinds of fish or you can just include big sharks, whatever kind of, whatever you feel like doing. Okay, thanks so much for joining me. See you next time.